Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on how to sing like, and next up is Ian Gillen from Deep Purple. Now before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, please like and subscribe to my channel, that'd be really cool. Uh, don't forget to ring that bell so I can keep new cool videos coming your way. And I have a singing course. That singing course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else, and you can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com. So with that said, I wanna dive right into Ian. Now, Ian is one of the most influential rock singers of all time, let's face it, right? And some of us remember him all the way back, even uh, as early as Jesus Christ Superstar. I know I've mentioned, I just did a What Makes This Singer Great, and I did one on Ian, and we talked about Gethsemane and some of the other amazing pieces that he did throughout that, one of the originals, actually, of uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, but um, I want I want to um, focus on uh, kind of two eras of him, and the first is going to be the Child in Time era, uh, and then, you know, again, Highway Star, so I've got a couple of those queued up. Now, again, I think that it's absolutely as important as important can be that um, if you're looking to get a mentor, any mentor in any discipline, I don't care what it is, in my case, it's singing. So I'm mentoring you in singing. No matter where you get a mentor, make sure that mentor can do it and do it well themselves and can display other students doing it. This is really important. Uh, I love one of my students that said, you know, he in his life he felt that a mentor can only take you as far as they have gone themselves. So if you see some other coach on the internet or some fancy advertising or something, uh, just remember that that coach can only take you as far as they've gone themselves and no further. So just remember that, it's a really important concept. So with that said, I, I do this so I do it by demonstration and uh, I think that, that demonstration isn't a way to teach, uh, it's the only way to teach. So I'm gonna fire up right now, this is Child in Time, play some of it and then we'll talk about it as we go. Sweet child in time, you'll see the line, the line that's drawn between good and bad. See the blind man shooting at the world, bullets flying, or taking I'm pointing something now. I add a little Ken Tamplin in this. I'm not trying to sound exactly like Ian Gillen, um, but he's very theatrical in the way he does presents this song. So you know, sweet child in time, you'll see the line, the line that's crossed between. Sorry, is that uh, crossed? A good and bad, right? So he's very theatrical. I could just literally see him, at, you know, Jesus Christ superstar or hair or some other play somewhere and, and presenting this story, you know, as a theatrical um, uh, artist, so to speak. So um, now as we're going through more of this though, I, I add kind of a little bit more Ken Tamplin, Dio, Coverdale to Ian because Ian kind of stays a little thin on his sound and I actually like to have a bigger, girthier sound. So just know that that's coming in. I'm not looking to sing it exactly like him, but I will explain his technique along the way. Here we go. And you've not been hit. Flying lead. You better close your eyes. I'll bow your head. I'll bow your head. Right. He has a fantastic grasp on mixed voice. If you really listen through that song, a lot of times he's going from chest to mix to head to mix to chest to mix to head, and he's going back and forth. And so you've got to be really careful not to over sync parts if you don't want to like overstate the song or overstate the section in the song that you're singing. So you, uh, oh, right? Yeah. Right? You've got to be able to get in through the passaggio seamlessly to where you can't hear the break. And then you never really know, is he in chest? Is he head? Is he pulling up chest? Is he in mixed voice? Which is a really amazing, amazing art. It's very difficult to do that. And I do that quite a bit throughout the song in honor of him and trying to match at least the energy and not like over sing it so much. I do over sing it because I like that, but not so much. Here we go. Yes. 
Yeah. The high screams coming up. Before I get to this next section, I want to point out that um, his falsetto, if you go, it, uh, it's really bright and tubular. It's really uh, pointed and, and, and has a nearly nice punch to it. So, right? Now, a lot of people, when they first start out and they want to sing with, with through using their falsetto, they'll go, and they have that really hooty fluty sound, and they'll think, oh, I can never do this because that's not what my falsetto sounds like. Well, actually, that's the way my falsetto used to sound before I started to work it. So I cover all that. That's in the head voice portion of my singing chorus. But if you get it bright, so start small. Hold it, hold your breath. And, and you can sing as little volumed as possible in order to be able to get this. So if you add too much volume, you may over bloat the chords with um, too much air and blow them out. And that's where you get, end up with a hooty fluty sound. So you start smaller. And as soon as the chords can handle it, you add a little more weight. And as soon as it can handle a little bit more, Right? Now, I've grown my fold so much in my head voice that I can sing where you don't even really know if I'm a chest or head, right? And that's sort of the genius of being a baritone and understanding how to grow that part of my voice so I can sing a lot of registrations where it sounds like I'm pulling chest up really high. I do that too, but I will, I'll find, I'll pace myself to find ways to mix as I'm going through this uh, kind of stuff. So here we go, next one. Now, as you're going up a little higher, you'll notice the higher up you go, the easier it is to get bright on the sound. So um, in the lower registration, you have to work that and we have to work the folds to come down into you know, your, your uh, upper belting register to get that robust and strong and powerful and bright and brassy. Uh, but, ah, right? So as I go up a little bit higher, I can be a little brighter on that tone and I can work that tone. So I'm showing you that here. But now the interesting thing too about Ian is that he has, kind of gutted his mid voice. Like he didn't have a lot of belting mid voice. He had his lower, mid lower register and then nothing really belty around the maybe A5 to the B even into the C, uh, excuse me, A4 uh, to the B4 to the C5, somewhere right in there. He didn't really belt that much at all through that section. We're gonna talk about that more when we get to Highway Star. Um, and, but then what's interesting is kind of later in life when he did Perfect Strangers, he did do that. So he somehow along the way decided he was either could, had it all along, we didn't know it, or he grew it and, and grew that over time. Now, Steven Tyler did the same thing. He used to be the same. He used to just kind of sing in lower parts and the screaming demon, they used to call him singing up high. And he really had no mid voice. And then later in life, he got a lot of mid voice um, through a lot of this, especially uh, in the post run DMC walk this way era. You know, he used a lot of mid voice stuff. So let's get into the really high notes here. I'm just stretching and I'm yawning and I'm getting my uvula and my soft palate to rise so I can create more space to get up. I think it's a G or whatever. I have to go back and look, but G sharp G. Um, and, and, and so I'm creating more space to get to those high notes. Now, a lot of people says I can never get to those notes. I used to think the same thing too. And I would just, I, I'd work it and work it and I'd add on a note. And I'd be happy with that. And I just keep going back, make sure I got that note, didn't lose that note, cool. Then I work it a little bit more and then I'd add another note. And this comes like in a gym, like working out with weights. I mean, stretching and stretching and you know, getting the tone and all that stuff. To the extent that, you know, I go through this whole thing. Now I don't wanna, I've got more to, songs on what stuff I wanna cover here, but I wanna go through um, 
the end of this here because I wind up, I think I take this to a C6 if I'm not mistaken. I wanted to go a lot higher than Ian because everyone brags about how high the G is. And then, well, let's, let's, let's ramp it, ratchet it up even one more notch and take it a little higher. Check this out. Okay, so like I said, I think I went to a C6, which is quite a bit higher uh, than the original. And like I said, this is all about technique. I wasn't born with this voice, guys. I had to work at it. That's why I said I cover all of this in my singing course. And it's not something that happened to me overnight, you know? It took me years to be able to do this. So uh, I wanna move on to Highway Star um, because it's awesome. <laughs> but, um, and then I wanna show you about the gutting out of the mid-voice thing that I was talking about. Check this out. <laughs> Right, he's able to go through the passaggio and you don't hear the register break, right? And that's what was cool about him is you never quite knew, oh my gosh, you know, he's able to do that. Well, that's sort of the beginnings of understanding how to get to good mixed voice and have that a usable part of your range. This is really important, guys, because a lot of people, I want this range and I want to sound like this. Well, this is how we do it. We start building chest voice, then we build head voice, and then we slowly fuse them together for one long, powerful note, like what you just heard, um, and using this in different uh, styles and timbres of, of uh, registrations of our range. Point out one more thing. Um, when I went to record this, and I, this is a no-no, guys, so I don't recommend this unless you know what you're doing. Um, his voice in the original was really dirty in the low end, and when I warm up for a long period of time, my voice gets kind of like golden voice, and I don't mean that to congratulate myself. I mean it like sometimes it almost becomes too sanitary for it being really kind of carbuncly and dirty like his sound. Now, that's not to say I can't get distorted on a sound or I'm warmed up. Of course, I have amazing control of it, but it's not quite that donkey on the edge, you know, distortion where it's like, ugh, you know, I'm gonna, be, I want it to be a little dirtier in, in, a, in a, a street singing kind of way. So on this particular day, I just said, I'm gonna go in and sing this and not warm up at all so it sounds real throaty and dirty, right? And I'll, I'll do things like that for effect. Oftentimes I'll set my voice up, or I almost always will set my voice up for a specific song that I'm gonna sing. If I'm gonna sing clean, like, you know, Paul McCartney or something, then I'll, I'll warm up a real clean sound like Elton John or whatever and if I'm gonna sing dirty like this uh, or in this case I won't warm up at all so it's really dirty or if I'm gonna sing Coverdale or something like that then I'll, I'll warm up to a certain extent to get different sounds and tonal quality so I wanted to bring that up again I'll put all these in the description so you can watch the whole songs because you know they came out pretty cool but I want to get to Perfect Strangers because this is one that really fascinates me because when I took on this tune um, there's a lot of stuff that he did in his mid voice upper mid voice that he never did way back in the early purple days and yet he does it here and did a fantastic job now I, again, Ken Tamplin did up and Coverdale did up a little bit more, a little bit of Ronnie James Dio because I like that sound. So bear with me because I just like a bigger sound in that. However, nonetheless, um, I feel like I, I hit all of the, the main points of it. Check it out.
didn't do any of those notes, guys. So I'm kind of like, I'm just enjoying the song. And in some sense, I almost sang it kind of like melodically, like, you know, cashmere or something. <laughs> You know, da da dum, 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 da 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 da. You know, so I'm adding this whole psychedelic, you know, era uh, to this music that wasn't necessarily there, but it's done in the spirit of it. So it's like, oh, why well, he could have done that? I could see, I could have seen him doing that, right? That's how I think about it when I do, when I go off on it. I don't try to take it so left field that people are going, oh gosh, you know, he had a Justin Bieber to, oh, a Deep Purple song. That's, it's uh, terrible. So anyway. Right, then so Paul Rogers comes in. Like, these are all my bros, man. These are all my my icons that I just, you know, mentors to me. Remember we talked about mentors. And so um, I just looked up to them and I just incorporate a lot of that in my different singing style. So anyway, gang, I'm doing most of this by request. So um, if you've got a request for me, please put it in the description and check out my next video.